So, continuation of how we've been doing this. Um, tonight, basically a look at most of the enterprise phones less. It's electric and gas, we are, we've already uh, taken a look at those. Um, and then I, I break in the middle to kind of give you a summary of, of the big picture, and then we finish off the evening with uh, you know, some of our more operational funds, if you will. Um, so off into water. Water essentially is, um, you know, water's got, I think we'll take a look at water and sewer on, on the capital levels where the significant changes are, but uh, for the, the water, 3% increase on operational for personnel, and then we've done some personnel shifts around, which were basically net neutral, just for organizational issues that uh, DC wanted to cover. So we added a customer service <coughs> for water, we removed the wastewater position, and then our end result was pretty much no change in, in personnel expenses. And those, by the way, those are not in the book. So, DC added those, I um, think, last week. <laughs> so, I didn't mean to throw you under the bus this quick. <laughs> I was waiting to throw him under the bus later, so I, I pulled my punch too quick. That got it. If we put the lights down during a budget discussion, you might fall asleep. But we can't. I, I'd rather you sleep, so I'll turn the lights off. Everybody good? All right. Um, revenues, um, they, they look pretty pretty typical. So to stop a minute on the revenues. They're not growing anymore, but other revenues are. Um, Kind of from growth, so why, why aren't we seeing? Any? Well, we're not we're not making a big assumption for growth, and most of the the village's assumptions don't include water sales. So you'll see the additional water sales that will happen on the village's side will be through their CUP, and what we'll see right. is yeah, no. we'll see the franchise increase on well, the general fund growth side. outside the, the villages. Well, where are we tracking we're, this year? Yeah, for compared to well, adopted, compared compared to twenty seventeen actual, we're up. In our projections by about a quarter of a million. So we're going to be short on our adopted budget pretty significant this year. I think so. I mean, well, I wouldn't go pretty significant, but I would say we're probably going to be short. Well, $250,000. Yes. Or, or thereabouts. Right. 17 actual. Okay. 8228. Okay. All right. Okay. On expenses, um, We'll, we got the we got the change there a little bit in capital, and we'll talk about capital here in a second. Oh, one other quick question on the, the revenue: um, the other funds we saw that they mostly all had um, increased interest on investments, which makes sense, but we're not budgeting anything here. Two, two. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we can add I mean, a couple I don't more know. dollars what in it's there. What it's supposed to be, it just, it's it just seems. All I mean, I definitely think it's trending higher. We can bump it up. Yeah. Um, on capital, system wide improvements, reuse mains, um, a water tower generator, um, and then some other of the plant and storage projects that they have in mind. DC, do you want to give any more detail on those projects you have in mind on water? Uh, the system wide improvements, we're going to do some replacing. Uh, Smaller lines in, uh, in, the, in the Beverly Shores area. The reuse main, we want to connect Windsong to the reuse system. There's about 100 homes there that they're all plumbed for, for reuse. And we just don't have a, a main running along 27 there, so we can connect them. Uh, the water treatment plant generator is a, an old uh, generator at the main water treatment plant. I, we first talked about replacing it. I think my first year here, which would have been five years ago, so it's it's past replacement. Um, the Sleepy Hollow well, that's an irrigation well that, that uh, we have a separate CUP of uh, 44 million gallons a year through St. John's, and that provides irrigation only at uh, Sleepy Hollow, and this is to do some work on the pumps there. And then the rest of it is uh, pretty kind of standard stuff. 
Cash reserves are some growth. And let me just, I'll come back to that chart here in about five minutes. Yeah. Unless the, you have any questions there. I have some questions on the just regular operating expenses, not from the capital side. On the uh, administration division, we've got $196,000 professional services, which was, was it, is that? We, there's a couple things. One, uh, our, our main CUP, the CUP 94, is due a 10-year um, report to St. John's, and that's a, that's a pretty significant event. We budgeted $75,000 in there for that. Uh, and then we've, we've added um, about $50,000 with, with the developments that have been coming through but many times we end up needing to run our model uh, to find out what the impact of those developments are on the system itself so that then we can tell the developers, you know, you're gonna have to help us with a bigger line or whatever. So, so we've added a little more money in, in there for professional services to run the model when we need to for developers. And those are the two major items of, those, of that list. And then on the treatment division, we have $50,000 for promotional activities. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're getting to the point where water conservation is more and more important. Um, and, and, so, and we don't really have incentive programs uh, for folks that are, have like older uh, fixtures, toilet fixtures and things like that, that uh, maybe they've got an old fixture that uses five or six gallons every time it flushes. And you know, new programs, those can flush in a, a Point six gallons, less than a less than a gallon. So we want to begin a, a, a program that would incentivize replacing those fixtures that use a lot of water for fixtures that use less. Um, we've also, I mean, we made most of the water goes to irrigation, and if we can help folks get their irrigation systems operating more efficiently, uh, we'd like to do that. Uh, so there's. Don't, don't have a complete program yet because I want the water conservation specialist to get here and, and be the person to manage that. Uh, but that was the idea with the with those with the kind of program. shower heads, toilet fixtures. Maybe if you maybe a, a home that has uh, uh, irrigation heads that are like the normal full coverage and, and they've got a shrub area where a more efficient way would be to use drip irrigation. Uh, we might. We might have a program that we would incentivize them converting in those situations. We will bring that proposal to the commission. We will. Before we go. So, okay. I think it's good. Good idea. And there's a big increase in operating supplies in your reuse division. Yeah, we've, we've increased about uh, twenty-five thousand dollars there for irrigation meters that are going in uh, in places where we have. Right now, Arlington Bridge in particular, but that's the best to install the meters on the reuse lines. Okay, because that's gone from like basically zero to 100,000 over the last couple of years. And that's, is that a, is this going to be an ongoing? We, we did a lot of meter replacements uh, two, the last two years. You see in the, uh, in the other the distribution area, we've, we've dialed that back just a little bit. Um, but as we grow, we're going to, you know, every house comes with at least one meter, and most of them come with two now. And so we're going to we're going to keep installing meters. I don't think it'll be quite as big as if you look at last year. I think we had a total of about three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars on meters. Uh, this year we're down. Uh, okay, we just spread across yeah. different funds. Yeah. That's right. probably why. Okay. Right. All right. That's it. Is Arlington Ridge and <coughs> Legacy and all them hooked on to reclaim for their lawns over there? Yes. Already? Arlington Ridge and Legacy. Had your list been any longer, the answer would have been no. So plantation's not? No. Problem at plantation is it was designed, it was put in with only one line, you know, one plumbing line. That, that system has to be independent and to go in there now and Put in an independent reuse system. Fortune. Probably a $10 million project. You know, and you get on that, and I digress a little bit, but that's one of the, the heartbeats, I think, also to the village's deal. When we did when we did our CUP in back to the Ray Sharp days, when Ray did, I think, a really fantastic job for the city to get us the, what, 9, nine MGD CUP? 
9.13. So 9.3 MGD. Part of that was the, the big plan that to show the, the, the reuse of the 8 MGD. Two of that MGD is your answer right there, the legacy and Arlington Ridge question. And then you'll, you'll know one of the things, I don't know if you noted it or not, it was subtle, but in previous budgets the last couple of years, you saw starting to stick money into reuse projects you know, to the tune of about a million bucks. Um, when the Villages project came along, we stopped doing that. So part of our problem with the reuse is do, how much value does it really have? Um, you know, the part of our CUP said we're going to use this reuse, we're going to get rid of it, but A, we have an infrastructure problem. Plantation is the classic example. Man, we could get rid of a lot of reuse there if we could, if we could get it down there, but there's a $10 million project. Um, we could get it to other sides, but we've got millions of dollars of infrastructure to get rid of this reuse water. Villages comes in, we, we'll talk about this a little bit too, we're spending a couple million bucks to get it to the villages, but it, it's all gone, and then we have instant growth, and there's argument that now we satisfy our CP, CUP requirements that reuse is being used and being applied in the way it needs to, and our hope at the end of this is our CUP for that two MGD that we have in reserve is not going to go down, which opens us up. Now there's a, you know there's another argument there too. We still need to get reuse getting out there because the more reuse we have, the more units we can grow in that two, two MGD. But I, there's really a big in my mind, and this is why I've very strongly advocated the villages deal for you is because it's, it's a chicken or the egg type of thing. Which 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 came first, growth? How valuable is reuse? Well, you can hold on to your reuse forever, and we've been holding it on to it for 15 years, and nothing's happened. So there. I th that all ties into that reuse CUP question. On the wastewater side, um, we removed a couple of position changes. Again, no big um, net move. This is new for this is uh, right. Same thing from there. Um, revenues. Um, the big the big change here you'll see is our other sources of revenues and that's our capital spending so we're going to talk about that in detail in a couple of slides. Um, I think there's a revenue number increase there that I want to bring to your attention to. That's a half a million dollars. Now that half a million dollars or about four hundred thousand dollars represents, now that is half right, that math is half the, that's the revenue growth for the, the sewer, uh, bulk sewer contract with the villages, which we anticipate to start April. Is that um, miscellaneous operating revenue number? Because that's yes. a new line. So it's only 300000 Right. It, I, okay, it's three hundred, not half a million. Which, which, which shows up there. So I was doing my math wrong. Um... I think I double clicked here. There's a breakdown in all the categories. Um, the, and those kind of the, where's the slide, that slide. You, so this is kind of if you guys have any questions on general operating, the smaller stuff, and then I'll jump to capital. The, the chemicals seem to be significantly up across the board. What's that? We're, we're we're, transform we're transitioning from um, chlorine gas to uh, sodium hypochlorite. It's a little bit more expensive. And then in both of the treatment, in this case, in both of the treatment plants, where we are, where we're now uh, pressing and create pressing the, the sludge, that requires a polymer to thicken it so that the belt press actually optimizes its performance. And that polymer uh, in, from yeah, both treatment plants is a, is a pretty significant additional cost. It's offset by a little bit of the money that we had to spend on um, maintaining the spray fields and the, and the application sites because now we don't have to lime those and, and, and do a, some other stuff. But, but the additional polymer at uh, the two plants is a, the biggest of those. What was the reason for switching chemicals? Uh, it's, it's safer. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I guess we haven't. We haven't. Uh, we've done that on the water side. We have not done it uh, 
Uh, the only the, other, the place where we're using boring gas still is out at the turnpike facility. Uh, we have not mm -hmm. transitioned that mm -hmm. in this project. It's safer for it's safer for the sodium hypochlorite because if there is a, some sort of a spill, it's much less uh, for the people working volatile. with it. Yeah, is where the safety is. Yeah. And there's a big um, expense in for repairs and maintenance of vehicles in the spray field division. Yeah, we've got it. We've got about uh, fifty thousand, I think, or forty thousand, forty-five thousand in there to remove the gun sets on the north side. Uh, 470. Uh, you know, it's a spray field. Well, there's a these big irrigation heads, and those all have to come out. Um, so that's what that's. Why is it in vehicles? It's, it acts, I think that's the way it shows in your the way it's rolled up. It's actually O and O and M other than buildings or. This is some long wrong line. Well, it, okay. It's just okay. That makes sense. And, and before we jump into capital too, let me in, inform you in, in the workshop here too that we we um, there's an existing resolution that that transfers the CPI adjustments of the utility funds to the city manager. The water and sewer fund, I do believe at this stage, will need a, the, the, a modest CIP adjustment. We're talking 2.2 percent. Both, both of our rates are, are pretty competitive, but from a cash level, too, I think the 2.2 is going to help. And we we didn't do that last year. Because we're running a pretty more. good deficit this year with the capital projects. That yeah, and when we show you those charts, you'll see. I mean, I feel good about it, but, I, I, you know, we can't keep missing our CIP increases on the, on the water and sewer side. So with that, you know, we, we talk about our cast position. So, you know, this, this chart looks nice. Now let me show you the real chart. Um, look, before I show you the real chart, we did that one on purpose. That's the, that looks nice, but um, now into those, that big $3 million or so dollar difference that you see. Here are all the infrastructures that we have planned for water and sewer, and there, there are a bunch of them. Um, the turnpike plant, it really needs an expansion. Um, and we, 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 we crafted the villages deal around the villages paying about $9 million in a capacity charge because we knew taking on their water was going to require us to expand the plant. Um, so we think that uh, we need to start planning to plan to expand the plant by another million or so gallons. MGDs, one MGD. Um, that number we're saying is four. Um, th that may be as much as 12, but we feel comfortable right now planning it at four, probably seeing out fiscal years that we might need to stick a little money in there. So this budget, I, I digress a little bit, has a plan to start putting some money away for that cap project, which is the paint pl plant expansion. And then down here, we are also going to need significant professional engineering services to review and, and prepare for that plan. So all in all, you've got about $4.75 million that's going towards the plant expansion. So that's the bulk of this number is starting to plan for the plant expansion. Some of the uh, uh, other issues here we have is um, uh, some sewer line renovation projects here on Penn Street. We've got a, a sewer main that goes underneath a building. We want to relocate that. We've got some lift station rehabilitation. These, these um, um, projects here are uh, kind of typical system upgrades. So we've got some pumps we need to change out. A process, I, I changed the number on this. I think it's in your book as sludge trailer. And DC just explained we went to the polymer, so it's not a sludge trailer, but a process sludge trailer. So this is really, instead of having the big tankers that take the liquid um, solids out and spread on the field, we need trucks now to haul the, the patty off versus the liquid sludge. Um, the discharge on the replace, on the, on, um, um, uh, another pipe there, changing out some uh, clay pipe and then updating some controllers at lift stations. Um, then back at the turnpike plant, these two numbers 
um, or generally general maintenance for both the treatment plants. You know, through the year, we have things that pop up that break down that's in the capital category. So we expense those in the capital side. So all in all, about 5.9 million in, in the capital projects on the sewer side. How did the building get built over our sewer line? <laughs> Just the one. I, you know, those are... I, I wish I could tell you this is the only one, but it's not. We have them... You know, all over. And we, I and think we, it, know, we don't have an easement. They just, I, did, I think that just goes back to historical it, expansion back old. in the day. This it's old. This it, is, and it's, it, it's on Pamela Street right you know, there at the corner. Yeah. Uh, it's that church. In, yeah. in your neighborhood, we had a gas line that went through somebody's yard that didn't have an easement. Up, uh, We were doing a sewer project up here behind Lee Street and behind that tax place that's right here on 441. Found out that um, a lady wanted to put up a fence and it was on a on a sewer main. So I'm gonna say these not in a, some kind of easement. It, it typically goes back to older core Leesburg and it probably just back in the day when we just built stuff. But we're only doing this if we don't have an easement, not because we feel bad about having a sewer under someone's property. Pretty much, no, actually, or, or feel, especially. I don't really want to have us break. In no, no, no. I mean, we're not. If, if we have an easement, we're not. And they just ignored it and built over it at some point. We're not then right. just there right. to relocate. Right, right, and that's, that's like. That's right. I just want to make sure. Like, yeah. and that's a no, good we, example yeah. okay. of okay, we've got a sewer main under somebody's house. We're fixing that. Last night, you guys agreed to the hold harmless agreement where we had a sewer main and an easement, and we said okay with the pool with the mm -hmm. Balmore thing. So that's hey, we're in our easement. We're okay. So. We did the we did the hold okay. harmless. We actually have a manhole under the new hospital expansion. So, uh, I don't know. And we issued before. How did we issue a building permit? No, they, it was there before. They discovered it. So, and the hospital agreed. They. It was. <laughs> The only thing I would say, this isn't, this is what the fourth city we've managed here, um, and different war stories from other city managers. That's, that's not, this is not a Leesburg specialty. You know, most communities that have, have a history like Leesburg and, and date back in, in to, to the early 19th century and we're building clay pipe, you know, that's how we did it. And so this is not a Leesburg problem. This is, I think it's a, it's a, it's a community-wide issue. And, and back in the day, we built sewer mains and we put them where we put them and then you know, 100 years later, it turns out there's a leak or something happens and uh, we should have gone back. So when we pull these things out, we go back to like original plat maps and, and it's quite the history project. Hmm. And it, it's, it's not special it's for Leesburg. So don't, don't you know, <laughs> I don't want anyone anybody sitting there thinking, oh, there Leesburg strikes again. No, uh, you know, this happens in Tavares, this happens in Melbourne, this happens in Lakeland, this happens everywhere. It's just the part of the business. Um, and then, so let me, obviously you see that wastewater is pretty aggressive. Um, so I, I, wanted to, I wanted to put together some charts to kind of show you where, where we are really going to be at. And, and I excuse, excuse the, and I, and I combine these water and sewer just for sake of, of explanation. But right now, um, we're going to be sitting at about $2.2 million. You know, if we didn't spend a penny at the end of the, is that, that's 22. I probably should come up here. So about 22.2 million. Of that 22.2 million, we're actually going to spend about 12. 8.3 is infrastructure at the villages. If you recall about three or four months ago, we came to you with a villages contract to extend uh, wastewater, reuse, there was three lines, I think there was two wastewater lines that needed relocating and a reuse line. Our estimate on that was 7.6 million. Now that we've dug into it, it's 8.3. So we missed that number by about a half a million dollars in the planning stage, but I don't think that's a bad miss. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll be coming back to you modifying that 7.6 to 8.3 so we can get on with those construction estimates. The next issue there is we put also plan to reduce it, pending on the approval of the budget, another $4 million for those, uh, the treatment plant expansion. So that's where, we're, that's where we're using cash. 
So that actually brings us down to a total number of 9.9 million. Now, that's a big sink. And, and the, the question's been posed by a couple people in the room, like Mr. Luckage. Uh, you know, is the villages, is this growth paying for itself? I think the answer is it, it is. We're, we're dipping into our cash. Um, so let me show you where, how we rebuild this. As we rebuild, we will be having a series of $3 million payments from the villages to equal their $9 million in cast capacity reservation charges. So $9 million, um, and it comes in $3 million increments, and then um, based on, on discharger, their, their consumption. Um, so what we do then is we rebuild their cash reserves back. Um, and so we grow it. By the end of the fiscal year, um, we'll, we'll be up to 12.9 million. So we drop down real quick to nine and we're back up to 12 because we add in about a half a million dollars for growth and then we add in um, the next three million for capacity payments. And then we move up and each increment we block out, we receive another three million in capacity payments when we hit a million, a million and a half, and two million gallons based on their growth. So by you're looking at by fiscal year uh, 25, you're back up to the 12.2, 20.2 million dollars, and now you've rebuilt your system. Mind you, you still haven't dug into your reserve and replacement account. So when 441 comes along, you've still got some cash for that and you're still above your reserve requirement. So I think we're making a good gamble here to make these improvements, to move forward, and then still have growth. I think the picture gets even a little bit better because if you go and you take the land proceeds, which nets 5.5 million, and that 5.5 million includes a million dollars for core slab and about 4.4 million for the villages after you pay back EPA and you take that money and you don't bring it towards special projects, although you could because this chart shows you can, so you have that option, you take this 5.5, you stick it back in the fund, and at the end of the day, same chart here, by 2025, you're back up, you're, you exceed by $3 million about where you're at. Um, now mind you, we still probably need to nip away a little bit at this for uh, further sewer plant expansions, but the, the premise of this chart here is to show you that at the end of the day, you're still going to be in the black, you're still going to be above reserve requirements, and you're still going to have a couple of pennies in your pocket to hit standard operating modifications and, and maybe long term have some transferability to the general fund. But you're not talking about actually taking all the land proceeds and putting them in the water fund, are you? That's what this suggests. I think you could go either way. I think I think you could take this money and stick it over in special projects and do capital projects in the general fund, or you can take this money and stick it in the water sewer fund, you know, and put all. I think it's it's really up to where you want to go. It seems with it. That that's like double. Then we, we at that point have well over double our required reserves. Which, which fund are you talking? If you put e five and a half in there. Because our required reserves look like about five and a half, six, something like that. Yeah, that, that kind of, there's my point. So okay. that's, you know, I think we, we've made a, a good plan to move forward and there's cash to either keep it in water and sewer or bring it back over to general. That's, that's why I wanted to show you the two different charts. Um, with that, the next funds that we have for, for this evening are kind of the smaller funds. There's not a whole lot to them. So I wanted to take this opportunity and go back and kind of review the, the major funds, where, we, where we've seen growth the last few years, where we've spent the money, and, and what we have left. And at the end, I think we have a really positive summary. So where I want to go now is to, to go back 
and look at our major funds. And and, and I know out in the in the audience, it's going to be tough to read. Uh, but essentially, what we have a, is, a, is a look at the general fund. Now, I mix that with communications because you, you've got to take into account uh, the sale of the communications utility, your electric fund, your gas fund, your solid waste fund, the wastewater, and the water funds. I merge together, uh, and then airport and building. In fiscal year 14, and I'll read these numbers out, the, the fund, now this is total monies above reserve, so total reserve monies, the, the general fund plus the communications fund had $11.9 million. The electric fund had $14.6 million. The gas fund had $4.5 million. Solid waste had one9 Wastewater and water had 18.9. Airport actually had zero because 15 is when we started that fund with about $450,000, which we took out of a uh, general fund. And building fund actually had a negative $40,000 because that was about the time we're just starting to come out of the growth. So we move ahead five years forward, and including the sale of the utility, the general fund has grown to 25.9. The electric fund's grown uh, by about $7 million to 22.3. The gas fund's grown to about 5.5. The solid waste fund's grown to about one point, or that solid waste fund, let me back up, has shrunk to 1.5. Water and wastewater has growth in it to about 27.8. Airport, um, including the original transfer, the million dollars that we're spending on the seaplane ramp, and then the sale to the on Jenkins, which we're going to assume is closing on August 2nd, puts the airport fund up to, with the seaplane ramp in there, to, to, that'll have about $2.3 million. And then the building fund has gone from the negative increment of about 40 in the hole to about 1.9 in the black. So all in all, we, we've changed from about $51.8 million in, in reserve and unreserved cash to $87.3 million. And that's a 35% increase over the four years. OK, so now let's be real, right? Because we've been spending a lot of money. So where has it gone? Where we've spent, this, by the way, let me, uh, another misnomer, this chart does not include, those numbers were already in here, but we transferred a couple of million dollars for Rogers Park Phase 1, a couple of street projects, the Dixie Project, and those, those numbers are all buried in here. So this is really, chart focuses on our last round of, of um, spending since you transferred about the six million dollars for phase two and phase three of Venetian Gardens. So of these funds we've spent about 8.3 in the general fund. We've spent or about to spend one in the electric fund and, and I'll explain where all this is going in a second. We've spent four in the gas fund. We've spent 12 or about to spend 12 in the water and the wastewater funds. We spent one in the airport fund. So we've spent, even though we grew here, this just says even though we grew by about 35 million, we've spent about 26.3 million of it. So even though you see 68% growth here, after we've spent, we still see about 17.8% growth in our cash. And that's still a good number. So now, where did it go? Villages infrastructure, this set six, that 16 million. That 16 million is the 12 in um, water and wastewater plus 4 million from gas. And the 4 million is gas expansions and getting the pipes out there and those type of things. Um, Venetian Gardens is 5.1. The pool is 2.7. The seaplane ramp, a million. The loan, which is the electric number, by the way. The loan from Carver Heights to the CRA um, on the Resource Center, a million. This, is, and that's to be determined, by the way. That might come in a little bit lower. And then the, the, the FSL grant to the mall. So all in all those, the 26.3 million bucks. So those are all the projects. Having said that, I think there's two things to point out because as all this pans out, 
your gas fund is now in a position to grow by $2 million a year. That's what that little note says. And your wastewater and sewer fund are poised to grow with three points to, to bring up. The first one is the $1.1 or $1 million a year at full grow out for the, the, the net of the bulk wastewater treatment. Um, the, the $9 million that's in these funds that's not showing up here uh, for the reservation fee, and then the $5.46 million that was there in the land sale. So that's where kind of a four-year look at your major funds and their balances. And everything, mind you, is, is still significantly above your reserve requirement. Yeah, I'm just so, on a solid waste, what, what happened with the... Um, for. That was the contribution over, we robbed Solid Waste to do uh, Rogers Park. Rogers Park and, and some of the entry signs. Um, so now let me throw this one at you. Um, so so how, much, how, much, how much cash do we have right now? So now I'm mixing a little bit because all those, those, those fund numbers are there. Uh, obviously, some of it's restricted for different projects unless you reserve it. So let's get back to kind of to tie this back to where you're at at a cash level for your CIPs. So um, when we ended, before we shifted money over um, to the pool, we had about 5.3 right now, about 5.4. Then we reserved 2.68 for the pool. So we're, we're, you're sitting at, you've got 2.7 million that's unallocated that you can spend. Now let me throw this at you because now let's go back to the general fund. Your general fund requirement is 4.8 million. We're recommending that you have 7.5 million. So you really have this number plus this number. So when we come down to these numbers, that's, we still have that good cushion built in for cash reserve and the general fund. So total cash available, uh, 2.7 to spend, that's here. 3.7 still coming in from fiber, so you're sitting around 6.5. And then plus wherever you wanna go with this, which is the 5.4 from the city. So you've got this plus that once we close. So I think on a cash level, we're still sitting pretty good. I don't, you know, I think we've made some aggressive moves. So I think for, a, you know, probably until the springtime, next summertime, we, we made some strategic plays. Uh, so we, we probably need to pull the throttle back a little bit and get some projects done and see where we're at and see how our investments and our, and our strategies paid off. But even said that, I think there's still a couple of small things that we can do. We've got lots of work to do. DC is obviously going to be very busy with finishing up the community center and some and the villages stuff that's still going on. So we've got everybody busy and I, we've really loaded, I think, the the gun, if you will, the powder to get a lot of stuff done. And now is, I think, that really good time to come back, evaluate on your agenda is your, your visioning process and do we want to brand kind of and, and coming back and reloading and re strategically thinking where we go for the next few years. So let me break there for any questions you have on that. Yeah, I, I'll just say my thought on the, on the village of money is to probably go more with the um, general fund for future projects outside of the, um, I think we were looking at it in, this, in the formal, just there in the wastewater, in the, right. instead of the wastewater. My, my only caution on that is, is to, before we start shifting it over general fund, we need to make sure that we've got everything covered. The big, I think the biggest mystery on that one is going to be is how much is that plan expansion going to be between I think what we have and what we have coming in I think we'll be able to cover it but before we we, we need to know what that number is we need to see what those flows are so I think you know there's a year or so a good year before we can I really I think cut that sale money free well, I think I don't know if we talked about it but uh, for me uh, I know we sold off our industrial land, um, and I want to. Are, are we looking to look for additional land to make another commercial development, industrial job, kind of employment center? 
Are we even, you know, buying land that possibly could do that? Um, you know, we sold off a big chunk of land by the turnpike. Um, so as a city, are, are we charting our own course to say in the next five years, you know, we're looking for a, a spot, a few hundred acres of land that we can buy, control, lure developers in, um, and maybe become a job opportunity. For me, I think that's that's the future of the economic development of, of, of a city. It's kind of control your own destiny. Um, you know, you know what, what industry I think um, is probably yet to be determined, but I think we should be looking um, and see if there's a possibility. But I'd like to see us explore those options and if something comes in at a decent price that staff kind of uh, brings it to us. Let me and let, let me address that because I think on that avenue there, there's there's two paths that you need to go down and we need to we need to follow. The first one is the airport. Okay, so we, we sold off the industrial property. I think pound for pound on a on a taxing level and increasing our potential ad valorem, it was a no brainer to go down the path that we went down because that industrial path that we were on for the past 15 years was see what we can do to sell property leverage your taxing authority to do it and then you know create jobs and I remember that, that net that big slide was 750 million dollars of taxable value the villages way versus two hundred thousand dollars versus the industrial development way or two two hundred two hundred million I'm sorry 750 million versus 250 million so I think we made the right choice there, but I think you also, Commissioner, have a point about where do we go in the future? Do we want to look at industrial property otherwise? So I think you have two, two ways to go. Way number one is, um, and I think that's why the, the airport master plan was real important, because if we, we do something a little different and if we do something strategic, I know it's got the airport in an uproar, but if we do close down that, that runway with 220, 321. 321 you open up significant property on that infield um, south of 441 where you have five six different lots that you can market for widget manufacturing put up a spec building in that area it's, you know you that that area when we did that is six thirty thousand square foot buildings Okay, so on our track record, I would say that's a pretty good bank for industrial development. So we already have it, their property. The next question is, well, do, should we now go out and spend capital on property so that we create another industrial park? And, and you know, maybe that, that's something we need to look at too. Uh, Mike and I have had that conversation. And I, so I, I think the commission needs to give some more further direction on that because there could be expansions on the industrial property at Griffin Road. There could be other properties that we invest in out by Turnpike. So I think that question's there and I think we probably need to delve into that slowly as well as the airport question too. I know that one's, that one's a tough one. But I, but I think I, I bring that to your attention because on at least on the staff level we've been thinking about it and I, and I think publicly we just quite haven't got there yet. I just throw out because I, I don't disagree that having the property could be um, a good thing. I'm a little concerned that now is a, not a good time to be looking for property just because it's so expensive right now and we're having a lot of people come to the um, the city with projects that they were not three years ago. And that while we look for property to find a deal, maybe we could come up with a um, like an incentive program based on bringing in jobs over the median income, where we would we would just you know you as long as you bring in the right type of jobs to your property, then you know we'll we'll, we'll do something. We would approve each grant individually to make sure it's not only the amount but the type of jobs we, that we think are good for Leesburg. And I think you know, just if you start thinking about ideas of I you know I could think of maybe you know make you know not your traditional industrial park but you know to you know to try to drive the economy and get some good businesses that come in that are more tech oriented maybe maybe we could look at some of our blighted property like on 27 coming in or the Wicker Furniture Place over on um, on 441 here so instead of going out and finding 600 acres you. You select some properties that maybe we could take out that then could go market to um, to somebody who could bring in a, a business that would fit on that site. Uh, well, like the land and county has is sitting there vacant. Yeah. By the way, the Wicker property looks like that might get redeveloped property oh, good. privately. Yeah, Mount Dora just as, did that with the downtown building, bringing in some sort of. 
tech company it was yeah. a private developer bought the building and they got some incentives based on the, the jobs that they were bringing and in. It's be, like exactly. and, and they, by the yeah. way, if we're speaking of the same thing, Mount Dora just did that recently. They spent 20, what is it, 20.6 million to expand down to uh, uh, a parcel that I don't know where is near Mount Dora, but um, so, and this is why you, I, I wasn't talking to the, about that one. I'm talking about one where they spent like forty thousand dollars to get some jobs. Oh, well, now they're, <laughs> well, they're spending, and, and see, and this is I think you go back and you look at our numbers with what we were doing with the villages, you know. So I know we threw out some big numbers there with with uh, with water and wastewater. Um, you know, okay, twelve million is what we threw out, but remind you that twelve million is cash. And that 12 million, we showed you that there's a path that that money's coming back. And, you know, there, there is a chance that the village's deal doesn't happen, but it, it, it is highly unlikely. You know, I think the worst case scenario is there is it's not going to happen as fast or to the magnitude that we think. I, whether, I, don't, I don't see that, well, I won't say what I was going to say. But where I'm going to say is we've leveraged our cash for a, almost a sure thing, where you look at other community, where Mount Dora, you know, they're going out, state revolving fund loans, doing other programs, where they've spent another 20 million to get infrastructure out just to get in the marketing business. And I think that's the question that we're gonna need to ask ourselves, and I don't think it comes right now, I think it comes in, and I think we need to go through the divisioning branding process that we put out to RFP, and that's why, that's why I stress that I really think that that's an important process we go through, because we're really at a crossroad right now. We've spent the last five years, basically, redeveloping internally with Venetian Gardens, with Carver Heights, then this villages thing popped up. So our attention's really been focused on those things, and I think that's where it needed to be focused. And I think that meshed with where we're trying to head. Um, but I think we're now at a crossroad that as these, this big pro these big projects get finished, I think now we really do need to sit back and think of where we're going to be in the next next five years, next 10 years. Do we want to be an industrial city again? Do we really want to put value into buying that property? Maybe so. Um, do, do, so I, those are the questions I think we need to ask ourselves. But I think we've 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 played the the played the game here pretty pretty well the last few years. That's I th there's there's a bunch of other funds that we need to go through tonight. But that I you know I, that I I think is the most from my perspective is the most important part about the budget. Those those funds, how they've impacted our direction, where we're going. And I think it's all very positive news because so I think Al, we've made some... So, so in the budget, do you have the funds? We talked about the Susan Street, the uh, bringing the um, Bellamo in to do a plan. Is that in the budget? That is in the budget. We talked about it at the CRA meeting at the last workshop. Okay. I think we, we allocated 75 for that, hoping that it will be significantly lower. But I think that that's another important, another important study we need to take a look at. Yeah, that predicated on the pool going there? Yes. I think part of the pool will be weaved into that concept. So are we, are, are we not going to discuss any more options for pool locations? Is that part of, I thought that was not decided that was just an option. I th the, here's, here's where I've gone with the direction that I got from the commission. The commission reserved $2.68 million for the pool. I think that generally the commission felt that the Susan Street option was extremely justifiable because it, it brought in one of our new vision statements of in, uh, tackling blight and redevelopment and making ourselves a recreation location. So let's reserve the money. Um, look, I think the majority of the city commission wanted to do the new pool. We also, before we picked that final location, wanted to take a look at the Susan Street issue with is this a great redevelopment plan for the city there was a number of options that went into the Susan Street plan the uh, teen center concept the pool concept the the Birchwood concept uh, maybe potential housing locations there so all those things need to be looked at in that plan um, and then we make a determination on where the pool is and, and as well, I think simultaneously, we start spending a couple of bucks to start designing and nailing down the pool. And before we start digging dirt, hopefully I have the Susan Street plan down, we'll revisit the location issue. And then by the time we get to winter, spring of 19, 
those issues will be ready to go and you'll have a design concept, you have a location concept, and then bam, we're building a new pool. That's, you know, based on coming back and forth and a lot of other discussion. That's, uh, that's what I gathered and that's how I've moved from your direction. Part, part of that too is that uh, you possibly a new entryway if you, if you, I don't know if you followed up with them. Um, no, I had not uh, followed back up with, with Mr. Walling, but part of that Susan Street concept is uh, an entryway into Susan Street via 27. Whether that's south by the Popeyes on 27 or the south end of Mr. Walling's property at Palm Plaza or it, the north end up between the, the Bells Plaza and the Pizza Hut off 27. So I think all those are the concepts we look at at the, how we redevelop Susan Street. Well, I had a meeting with some the people that own three houses on the corner of Second and Dixie. And being that we've discussed trying to make that the thoroughfare but to connect Venetian Gardens to downtown, some of our meetings, um, they're very anxious to see if we have any interest in buying that. <clears throat> I know that on, I can't remember how, I know Dixie, it's 185 feet of Dixie, but I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember how long that is. And I can't remember if that backs right up to the shuffleboard or not. Some of them do, I believe, that's correct. And some of those lots have been sold. And I know uh, Jim Miller approached the commission numerous times about purchasing those lots, and the consensus there was we didn't. Um, well, this is new owners. They've only had them about a year. Yep. Actually, that new owner has approached me. Oh, okay. So I don't know, you know, where, and I just know with all the discussion going on, a lot of people want it. We obviously can't put it in the Mission Gardens, but if there's a plausible way to put it remotely in the proximity, you know, I'm just throwing ideas out right. here. I, I didn't know if we had set something in concrete or not. I thought for some reason we I thought for some reason we let that prop that whole idea go of that piece of property. We voted definitively the motion was to the no. Susan Street area. Now of course we could change our mind anytime yeah. we wanted to, yeah. but the motion was specifically the Susan Street. Yeah, but I'm just going back in time to you know, three years ago we started yeah. talking about that property by the we had the gentleman that was coming in with the metal factory there Mr. that wanted Miller. to sell us the building. We had our property, we talked about taking down the communication building there and and you know, all we had that whole discussion, and I, the consensus was at that point in time we wouldn't put the swimming pool over there. Uh, we and and um, I, I, yeah, I did, but I, you know, it's kind of if that's if that's where that's we're well, I don't know. I would, you know, I think our recollections are close. I don't, I don't know if I would go as and I, two things to say on that. I don't know if my recollection is that we definitively said we're not putting the swimming pool in that area, but we definitively said we're not buying that property. Um, first part, but I also, you know, from a staff level, when we had this pool discussion, um, this staff definitively recommended, look, we think that the best location for the pool is the gym slash Susan Street area, which led to that discussion. And I don't, I don't, you know, I know Mayor, you said that definitively we said over there, I don't know if I would go that far, but we definitely said, that's where it's looking like, let's commence this study. And I think Commissioner Bowen, that got your support. And so 4-0, that's, that, that's the road that I'm headed down is doing the study for Susan Street and starting a design process at the pool. My inclination from that conversation that had public input and for the city commissioners was Susan Street is probably it. And you know, obviously it could change, but that's I think that I hope I, I hope I clearly is that you're, so most of you're nodding at me so well, I, mean, I, we, we I, 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 I think I'm on the right board, path. Voted five voted did the same thing so so that there, was, there was even discussion about is it the gym is it Susan Street and because I remember we changed the motion to say Susan Street area right yeah so that, I mean, I, that's that's on the path that we're on yeah and and I I just you know, I'm not again. I'm not a big swimming pool person, so I, I think it. But as a, a feature of a of an overall concept there with um, Susan Street and what that could become, with a a, a significant overhaul there with a, a a master concept plan that includes everything from the rec center all the way back around to to 27. I think that would just make a tremendous um, recreation area for for uh, Central Leesburg here. And I know that there's some 
you know, I, I've seen the people on Facebook. I've had people tell, you know, say things to me face to face, and you know, walked into a rotary meeting one morning at seven o'clock in the morning. The first thing I get is, you know, what are you doing? And you know, and I'm like, I'm getting to eat breakfast and go <laughs> worry about that later. So, um, you know, but you know, but you know what? It's it, you, you know, I think that this that, that idea has a real a real potential to um, to 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 change um, perception and, and provide opportunities for kids to have recreation here and and we already have one the Venetian Gardens is is, gonna, is it already a great centerpiece for Leesburg. It's going to be even better with the new community center and everything else we're doing there. And to be able to be in a position where you have the basis already of uh, of the recreation facilities. Um, the outdoor facility, the indoor facility, and to be able to come in and, and add a swimming pool there, and and, a, and you're, you would create a significant um, a second park in, in Leesburg, I think, and it, that doesn't have to be on the water. And I know that's not the tradition that the swimming pool's always been on the you know on the water there, but um, but I think it would. Uh, you know, what what other I mean to have two parks like that in you know, Venetian Gardens and a Susan Street Park that has that recreation facility in a city the size of Leesburg, I think would just be, just be tremendous. So that's where I, I, I hope we end up there. And I hope that, I hope all those pieces come together too, um, to be able to connect it up. Where's the gym? Is that off of, uh, off yeah, Griffin? But, but what's the cross? Is it before, uh, Beecher? Mm -hmm. So it's in that area. And then we're looking at the pool right here behind. Anywhere between <coughs> here and here. But I think that's the whole thing is that, that we that need to hire a consultant to develop a whole plan, just like we do with Venetian Gardens, to show what it, what the area could be. And there's always a chance we get the consultant's report back and say we hate it. But I thought right there off of Griffin, yeah. though, when we were looking at that, when the Boys and Girls Club were looking at that that one time, I thought it was all muck and we couldn't build that. Uh, no, a portion of it was a muck. Uh, on, in that issue, we were talking about putting the teen center up next to the gym, kind of between yeah. the gym and the basketball court right off Griffin, and then putting the pool in the back. A portion of that was low. We, we think we could get, and we had that discussion, we think we could get it there. And then based on kind of the, the traffic and the smaller parking lot and some of the muck issues, we opened it up more to the, the Susan Street area concept. But how does that connect coming through to 27? You like, would look at the bike you, you look at the bike trail. If you, if you follow all of that through, through Birchwood and acquisition of, of that area, it hooks all the way down into Susan Street. And then Susan, Susan Street, Street with Mr. Bennett Walling's property can hook Susan's all the way down to 27. So you can okay. you can stretch the the Popeyes and the, you know where the trail is is really the better. For, for, you can get from where the trail crosses 27, just north of Center Street, all the way up to Griffin. And then maybe one day all the way up to the Resource Center to connect it in up there without you know everything off that trail. Maybe you'll have a nice cul-de-sac somewhere right. There in um, not cold a sack, yeah, roundabout there on um, uh, in that area too. You guys will have to decide that. So. But was the discussion that y'all firmly settled on closing the uh, the the Davenny pool as well when this one's built, since the locations are so close? In my mind, it was. Uh, so why would you keep both? I think just have, since just have it's to close it and then name the new pool the, the Davenny pool. I was uh, just curious. I missed no, that no, one. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I just was curious. I'm not sure where we're going to go with the, Are we done talking about this? Yeah. Um, where we're going to go in the end. But I, I just want to say something about the mall real quick in case we don't have a roll call or whatever later. But the, I was, you know, we were out at the mall uh, Saturday and uh, went to see a movie. And it was really kind of surprising to walk around and see the number of people walking around the mall. It's not like it was back in the 70s probably or the 80s. But compared to the last, uh, you know, 10 years of the number of people that were that were out there and I think Jonathan himself, as we walked through the mall, he saw six kids. It was like, hey, so and so. Hey, it was like, it was like, man, kids are hanging out at the mall again. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I, I hope that that continues to, um, to to progress that way. So that, I think that's a good partnership that we're doing there with them. You're good. All right. So moving along, we'll uh, wrap up some of these other discussions with with solid waste. Um, solid waste is, is is pretty much the same. Clicking the button here. 
There we go. Did he, um, on the There's expenses, just the, some of the line items, the residential, the operating expenses way up to 183. They've been running between 30 and 80. Purchasing cans. Hmm? Purchasing cans, garbage cans. Oh, okay. Yep. Go through it. Kids and dumpsters and that stuff. You need a lot of them. It's kind of a little bit, a little bit cyclical. Sometimes yeah. we have slow years, but others. I think it's a big year. Is it because of the automated um, trucks, you think? I don't, I don't think so. That, it, we haven't really looked at that, but there's obviously they're a little bit harder on it than the guys were where they put it on the stand and their stuff. So it might be a little bit. I guess it'll balance out less workers. Than what's the, what's the uh, life cycle? The, with the arm, yeah, uh, we've got to have ours for ten years now, and yeah, mine, we don't have any issues mine, with it. So I don't, I don't think so. I mean, ours, my experience is six years and was fine. Yeah. Well, I got uh, one in the broke, so you. But you can, you can, <laughs> you can lose a lid, or you can lose yeah. an axle and a wheel, and depends on how, how many of those cinder blocks you put in there. <laughs> and you dump You're it. Talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the fuel purchases for the, the same residential was up about 33%. I think we're just estimating uh, normal fuel stuff. We're gonna have a, I mean, as a, as. Well, I guess, well, you've been consistent around 75 and you budgeted 100. Well, we, we, it's, it's about 75, yeah. Um, there's a, a little bit of new growth in there. Um, the, but not, uh, was there, I don't think there was growth in your revenue. A little, not much. a little bit. You just pad your budget. My, I think you and I have a little bit. We're padding it the right of, way. <laughs> there. I would rather be low on revenue because if if you if the revenue number is big, somehow it finds its way into well, the I, expense number too. So I, this I way you'll look like low, a hero. Right now, low on revenue, high on expenses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I prefer it the other way around. Right, right, but the budget. That's what we were budgeting. Yes, yeah, so you're getting slack both ways. Okay, I, I can. But this is not like it, these are things that, that could change if you don't use them. It's not yes. committed funds. Yes. And the, um, the, the both the salaries and overtime were up substantially in the commercial division. Is that an allocation issue or? We took one from landfill. Okay, they, that's where that went to. That that's why it's going negative. Is we took a person out of there that was mm -hmm. allocated and we shifted them back over here because they're not really working for landfill. So we we're just getting it ready. Okay. So I think you see it both. So. Yep. Okay. That wraps up solid waste, stormwater. Couple of couple more projects in there. Um, I think we lay out your projects. I, I just want to ask on the stormwater, what, as I, and, I, and I had this conversation with you about the lake. Is it what's the lake over in Beverly Shores? Lake Lorraine. So that that is that was in the budget last year. It, it, it is, is out for now. We're to we're, uh, we're pretty close to getting the contract uh, scope of work to procurement. In fact, it may have gone. Already gone, and we'll go this week. Uh, we think that uh, we're probably going to probably going to spend seven or eight hundred thousand dollars cleaning that lake up. How much? Seven or eight hundred thousand. Oh, it's, it's a mess. Yes, we've, we've done a, some survey. We've, we've, there's a lot of silt in there that we're going to remove and, and do a really good job. Then. But you had that much budgeted. Did you have like eight hundred budgeted left? We had four hundred thousand budgeted, oh. and then. Uh, We've got a, a, a project that we're doing over in uh, in stock at, on Robin Hood that's going to have, I think, maybe a couple hundred extra in it that we would move to the, cover the Lake Lorraine. And the, the way we're writing the scope of work at, at Lake Lorraine is that we're, it's a unit price contract, so we're going we're gonna to get as much of it cleaned up as we can. And, and now I've, I've noticed that the, so on that, that particular lake, what's the, what's the road that um, runs? In front of Bear, not the one in front of Beverly Shores. That's Griffin, but that runs out of Beverly Shores back to um, 441. What's that road called? Lee. Not Lee. The next one, the next road uh, um, west. Um, there's a church on the corner. And it goes up. Anyway, Marshall North. This one. What, whatever that road is, and it, and it goes back up to Citizens. Yeah, comes out. So Gardner? on the Gard Gardner. Glen. Glendale. Glendale. Glen Glenview. 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 Yeah, so um, um, as you go up that road where the where the lake 
There's a little causeway kind of. Yeah, and the the right side over there, that lake, that side of the lake stays clean. Is that a spring in there or something? Do you know anything about it? Why that side's clean and the other side just gets all that growth in? Did anybody go to the meeting a couple weeks ago about the hydro with the county, the state? Because um, they had a big meeting. I think it was on a Thursday night, two or three weeks ago, about what they we were going to do. Go, but we did. Uh, we did talk to. Uh, That's uh, Mike Slash and Mike Perry. Perry. Who was there? And are they going to cut funding on that, or are they going to maintain and keep going? They're going to. They're going to keep going. Uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife is going to continue to spray and. Uh, uh, and, and in addition to that, we've talked internally. We don't think that uh, we think we need to augment that with some spraying of our own in the in the cove, especially around the marina. So we're doing a little bit more than what they're doing, but they're going to continue. And the, the the district had the pretty the, kind of the two big projects. Well, the one that we encouraged to keep the hydrilla remediation moving forward. And then the, the big project that um, Mike Perry introduced to myself in DC was the um, kind of their plan for remediation of Lake Denham and purchasing some property kind of northeast or northwest of Lake Denham, which it was high in runoffs and TDMLs. And, and the overall plan is the, the more of the pollutants you can keep out of Lake Denham and rejuvenate Lake Denham, then that matriculates back to each of the, get, that helps Lake Harris and then that helps the chain. So it looked like the district had a pretty good plan. Uh, the other two, the, kind of the other two big projects, the, the State uh, Road 44 project, that's the one, Main Street Canal project, right? Um, which helps uh, Lake Harris, and we, we did receive some grant funding on that. And then the other one is also, we'd like to start going through in some of these ugly little holes where the state has these retention ponds. Uh, the state, uh, again, you know, the, as the state does, they will give us the property if we maintain it, and, and then that becomes, okay, if we put the uh, shallower slide slopes, we can take the fence down, we can maintain it, and where we have these, uh, ugly little retention ponds with the fences that the state doesn't maintain. We got to take on that burden, but I think that's worth it to clean up the area and, and have attractive retention ponds in our community. This And this, the, the one we're targeting is that one on Perkins that's just south of 44, 441. So once we take the fence down, we're responsible for cutting it and maintaining it? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh -oh. And, and we, got to, we got to make the side slopes 301. So that requires hiring anyone else? And our goal is to is to make that pond on Perkins look like the pond that's over on on Lee Street, uh, just right there next to the bus. Two are very different right now. Not that I'm a fan of, of hiring people, but make sure we're not putting too much work on the people we already got. We're picking up these new projects that's going to require work. So I, I mean, I, I know we hate to put another worker out there, but I mean, we're getting from the. Uh, 441 McDonald's, and we got I mean, we got to make it keep it pretty now, so it's not just going out there just whacking. You got to you know take a little extra time. So why we're getting these new ponds and we're beautifying, which is great. You know I, we don't want to see our workers you know overwork. What about that and pond? You saw our contract number go up too, yeah. so some of that's there. The pond that's in front of Royal King. I know we discussed that last year. Yeah, that that's a rural king slash state issue. It is, and we've we've gone and talked to them. Um, and they, they did a pretty good job of cleaning it up, and then they ignored it, and yeah, it's, it's, it's now right back. back the way it was. Um, they, they've actually got an opportunity to get a credit on their stormwater fee if they will take care of that pond a little better. And, and we went and talked to them and tried to convince them that it, it actually pay for itself. Mm -hmm. um, they just haven't been. Yeah, it's really a mess. So far. Yeah. We thought they were going to. And they made a lot of progress and then uh, just turned around and let it, let it go for a little bit. And it's, it's yeah, it's all over. Bro. Worse than it was almost. Can we use code enforcement there? Code enforcement. I've had but, to, I've had. And that's kind of how it starts. And I've had my stormwater guys go talk to them about maintaining, because there's a requirement for them to maintain it. And it uh, definitely does not have the capacity that it should have. Well, who are they dealing with when they go there? Just the local manager? No, I got well. The, I we were working the deputy director in public works to the manager there in the store. Yeah, the, the store manager. Yeah. 
so hundred dollar day will make them move faster than just a, yeah. a letter. Yes, <laughs> Off to the airport. The um, the airport. What's airport's pretty? What's that big change there? The grant is that? That's the master plan grant, or is that just? Yeah. Okay, that's a, okay. A tea hanger project. Right. Right. What about the lift station there? Is that in in uh, the water fund or is that the airport? That belongs to us, though, right? It shouldn't be that charged. That belongs the to Mr. Model. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna clean that. Honda, yeah, let me talk to you about the station, pond. the that, perfume factory. The, we got, <laughs> we we really have two issues there. We we have the lift station issue, which is a wastewater issue, and we have the clean the pond up issue, which is a airport issue. Um, based on your all's direction in the past, we went out and we procured a cleanup of the pond, mm -hmm. which would be around the lift station. The number that we got back was up like a hundred grand. Um, that's taking everything down, pulling roots out, and totally opening up that area so all of that vegetation is gone. When Tracy and I saw that number, we fainted, and then um, we got our heads with our purchasing agent, Mike Thornton, to go back through and figure out how we can do the project a little different. Um, so we have rebid that. Okay. Some of that issue may have been on us because our plan was to remove it down to the roots and just get everything out of there. Um, we only had one bidder on that project. We brought him out to the site. He's like, look, if you, you know, just ground cut some of these things and don't put the costs in to pulling everything out, you'll get about the same effect and it might save you 40 grand. So we, we're modifying the bid, we'll put that out to spec. Okay. I think we either have that cost already stashed away, we got 50 grand that's stashed away to do that. And the so lift station is a different we'll issue. But won't just grow right back? The, well, we'll treat it too. Yeah, I think it was a, a cut and treat. Uh, okay. I think, and it's a perpetual treat, I think we'll have to do. Is that where we're at too? It, or, I mean, it was it's, just, you know, if you're gonna go cost. from, 40 to 100 and you've been, you know, 10 grand a year trying to keep it maintained. It doesn't take a whole lot to do it right to start. I don't know what it takes to maintain it. But and, and, you know, maybe know. that's a project you do on a two year basis. You know, maybe at first we just want to cut the, the north side of that pond and maybe we do the second half, you know, the next year. Just that I had it rebid because I thought 100 grand for that number was pretty significant. Um, here, so here's your design what, construction. What was the lift station issue? Uh, the lift station issue. You want to hit that one? I don't. I don't think we have a fix for that one. I think that's a long-term issue and a, a significant we've, one. We've got uh, some odor control infrastructure there already. Okay. Uh, the flow through that. That's, that's in fact the on the, the capital project under the lift stations that's the lift station that we're working on oh okay uh, because the, the the capacity at that lift station needs to increase um we we're looking at, at how to get that done we've got a, a firm under contract right now to do a design um we've we've been in there and uh, the uh, the odor control system has got um a medium that we've replaced every couple of years. It's got a charcoal filter on it that we've replaced every year. Um, all that said, when the wind is blowing the wrong direction, we get phone calls. So it's a, it's a, I, I think that we can, we'll, we'll be able to make it a little better when we, when we improve the capacity of the lift station itself. And okay. Maybe not have quite so much uh, turbulence uh, when things are going through there. We've, we've got uh, we've had some some suggestions about maybe some other kinds of odor control as well. So Big we got, bottles of Febreze. Yeah, well, it's, uh, uh, peroxide and yeah. like that. So. With that, the, the, the airport has a couple other stuff. The, the runway identifiers, 
obstruction removal. Um, what was the tractor, what is the obstruction removal? Trees and brush around fences, and is that down there by the seaplane ramp? Opening that up too? No, it's it's on the other end. Actually, south? this this project might go away, um, or it also might grow. Currently, it is designed the precision path indicator lights on, on uh, three and thirty one have been out of service for some time because there's not a uh, 10, 10 degrees of visibility. Um, Aren't those the ones we don't need? Are those the ones we don't need? The happy lights? Yeah. You know, I asked that question to the FAA um, of, you know, can they just go away? Um, I've never gotten a definitive answer. Um, but the reason this might grow, too, is that there's visibility issues from the 31 approach, 3 approach, and 13. Pilots should technically be able to see one another from their approach if someone's on coming in on the other runway. And there's a lot of trees. Um, the reason why it might grow, the FAA actually said, we'd like to see you do something more permanent than just knock them down, they're gonna grow back, but um, mitigation alone could bring it really high. But the engineers also feel that that could be a very good project for the additional one billion in surplus funds in addition to regular discretionary funds. The thing is, is that it has to be designed, surveyed, on the shelf, ready to go. That one billion is for construction only. The master plan too will possibly dictate, depending on what we decide to do on the master plan, some of that might not need to be done. So there's a lot, a lot we, going on. Back to the, so if we may have just been that money, the, back to the, the T hangers. Um, you know, obviously the master plan is going to affect that yes. since we have not picked a location. But I've always been a bit skeptical of the demand for tea hangers. Um, what I'd like to see us do is require a $5,000 deposit, non-refundable from everyone that wants one, credit it back to the first year's lease and see if we can get it. I mean, we would fund it if we don't build them, but um, you know, if, if you don't have you know, enough people to put down five grand for a tea hanger, they don't really want one. And if they do, then we know, we can go ahead. So I'd like to see us kind of move and get some sort of commitment. I've asked people um, recently, since you brought that up about a year or so ago, as people have called to get on the waiting list, I have posed that question. It's probably about 50-50 of people that say, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be interested in that. I've also recognized, too, that the existing tenants seem to think that if they were built, that they would get first crack at it. And I don't, I've asked around to see if that's common to offer it first to existing. I, you know, I guess if they want to put the deposit down, that can happen. But really, the, the, the reason why the tea hangers are in there, even though you said that's not priority one, is because I've tried not to make too many adjustments to the capital improvement plan since it existed when I got there, because it has to mirror the FAA DOT capital database. So I've tweaked it slightly, just taking out some ridiculousness, but otherwise left it the same. So, because that concerns that concerns me even more, because maybe the demand is people from an old hangar thinking they can just have a new hangar. Then we're going to end up with a bunch of old hangers that nobody wants. Yeah. Um, so I, I just before we go that, I know we're not talking about going there right now. It's just in this. I really want to get some firm commitment. Yeah. How many are we building, Andres? With probably, probably what we can do with that money would be about maybe 12 or 14. Well, maybe between now and we can get a cash flow as to what it will bring in, how many people um, are even interested in, in a tea hanger. Even if they don't do the deposit, I think they can still do a firm commitment to let us know if you got 100 people so they're interested, you can build a 14 under the demand, then I think you can go to the deposit. Because if I got 100 people on a 14, now the first come first serve, but who's going to put the money, you know, where the mouth is? So I think at that point you are building demand, and then we'll know uh, if they really want one. But if you got bill of fourteen, you only got fourteen people interested, then they can either just kind of drop off, especially somebody from old hanger. Then I think you're really going to be stuck with old hangers empty, and new hangers are going to, you know, be somebody who, really, who already uses one. 
in the boat. I gotta ask. <laughs> What, what what do we need a boat for, man? Can the can the fire truck shoot into the water? That that boat right there is just a special boat to go. One end of the runway is more like a swamp, and our boat we got now it won't even make it down there off the camp. The runway that goes towards Howie. That's called a swamp out there. I thought we were doing good shifting that from the. Fire department and the general no, fund to the, you, to the yeah, airport. You did. I just, you know, I want to see a boat. Kind of I said this. Dude, I mean, that's one of those. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> do we really need it? One one time in five years, the fire department might need to go out there. Well, I mean, so. it, it, but at this point, the, the fire's in the water, so it seems to me it's fairly contained. I'm not worried about the fire. I'm worried about safety. It's, it, you know, it's, it's more rescue. It's more if rescue than fire. the runway the other day, and you ended up in the lake, wouldn't you like... I got a life raft. Just pull that up. Anybody going to get that. And besides, I'm not going to survive. So. <laughs> the gators will be happy. <laughs> At least it's twenty thousand cheaper than yeah, get forty five thousand. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's not the Claremont version. Water, but all that construction material is out there. It's not a big fancy boat. Yeah, no. Just throw you on there and get you out. Yeah, I'm not going to airport. We we talked about the airport cash a little bit. So it, you know, it's it's it's. it's Four fifty is how we started. We grew a little bit. We spent that on the seaplane ramp, and then we sold the property. That's basically what that chart shows. Pension and trust fund. Did I miss a slide there? Uh, typical kind of just, you know, there's so some of our, our contributions. Obviously, our contributions have gone up since modifying the police pension. Fire. It's not me, David. I'm really clicking it. Yeah, I'm not giving. I'm not giving you face. <laughs> Fire contributions actually have come down a, a tick, so that's good. So I'll just throw it out here again that I think we need to come up with a model to smooth our contributions. You know, and, and I've I've looked at. I haven't, Jim, and I haven't spent a lot of time on that. And I, and I, took, I think what happens on that. Is, I mean, the police ones, that terrifies me. We've got 12%, you're not going to get 12%. And so, that, I mean, that number could really jump. I, I understand where you're headed on that. And, I, and, and you know, we're at from, I don't know what our levels are funded overall, but they're in pretty good shape. We're, you know, close to 190% in blows, police and fire. So we're not behind as far as keeping No, I know we're not sound. behind, but we could but, run but until we double the pension contribution. And it'll happen in a recession. Well, and I mean, what we're seeing, what but then happen. that's going to, here's what that's going to take. That's going to take it, funding it to a greater level than we are now, sticking with it, and then that means probably going back to your tax levels or something different to fund that so that you have that reserve. So, I mean, if you, if you want that model, we'll put it together, we'll come up with a number, but at, at the end of the day, I think that's going to take amount of financial discipline that I don't know if I'm willing to recommend you do because it's ultimately going to come back to cutting projects, cutting people, or increasing taxes. Because coming up with that smooth number as far as funding, our actual liability. No, did you say 190 percent? No, 100 to 90 to 100 percent okay. of our liability. Right. I mean, I could see no, up to 112, but no, that, no, no. Yeah. Right. I just because the, 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 the flip side is we're going to do it. Is it? Oh, I thought one of them is is closer to 90. I would say fire is probably one that's close to 90. 90. And your good number is 75% funded, so I wouldn't start worrying about it. And, okay. and I don't, you, you, your funding number, I, I don't see us. And, and that's another area, too, where, where some of the you know, other rules are, are wanting 100% funding. You don't want to be forced to do 100% funding on your pension plan. There's, there's too much changes and too much growth areas, and that's going to increase your cost. You, you get below 75%, and then I think you have to worry. But all our funds are in good shape. And to do a, a smoothing out of the curve is, uh, I mean, I don't know. You, with that you, natural you growth, all the way. you're never going to get a break in that. And uh, you're not going to realize. And, and if, you, if you take the financial discipline now to come up with that number, you know, by the, with the growth included, you won't see relief from that till four or five years out, if you ever catch up to that. And 
So you're gonna, I think you're gonna artificially increase your taxes and increase your expenses to come up with that number. Or you, cut projects. Or cut I mean, projects. You can do it without, without those too. I, I'm, I just remember that we had years when, when the numbers were much higher. We were, well, not on the in those, in those recession fire, years, we were like in the, in the high 30s, I think. In those recession years, it, it um, hit hard. Which will be the same thing that will happen next time there's a recession, is they're gonna hit hard. So it's raise taxes now or raise taxes later, really. Or spend less now when times are good. That that's the question. Which equals less people, less projects. Yeah. As opposed to raise tax in a recession. I, mean, that, that's, I, think, we I think that's a hard choice on the on the pin. I mean, if you want us to put together that model, we'll, we'll do it. It's a big number. Without raising taxes. If you want us to show your model, <laughs> I mean, I, I would be interested in if, if you, you know, you funded it, you know, an extra. If you funded it each of them, you know, propo well, proportionally, whatever it would be, you know, extra two hundred thousand dollars a year, because we that we have that, we have we have an extra four hundred grand. That, that would not be hard at all to fund this budget. You know, what, what does that you, look you, like? You take all that, you what take that like? surplus, you that two hundred, and you throw it in there instead of doing the go back to roll back and all that kind of stuff you like there was a look, I, yeah, I don't know we'll come like, up with some, I'm we'll, curious we'll put it to, and it's 350 is the surplus number okay okay general employees pension uh, I'm trying to get back to the end do you got have any questions on the general employees pension there I think our, you know our employer contributions are starting to come down a little bit, but that continues to kind of hang on, even though that's a closed pension. The health insurance fund we, we talked about that, and you know pretty much what the we, we the, the savings that we've accumulated from the health clinic has, has really kept us from increasing the health insurance rates that we just did. Um, and there, you know that. So that's where the model is, and you can see where we've been using that. Essentially, these numbers are because we saved this because of the health clinic. So we've staved off that increase. And and we, we've talked about that here in, in in the recent areas. So workers' compensation. You know, I don't have any significant to add to this conversation, Jim. Do you? Yeah, you know, there's a big drop there. We had that one huge right. claim that ate, ate up the surplus, but it's building back up now. What's a huge claim? What's the number you would say a huge claim? It was claim? over $500,000. Wow. That was good. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I mean, uh, at least what we're seeing with the, the changes in the, in the way they're reimbursing legal fees. How much relief we're going to continue to to see on that side? None of those are uncapped. That's good. The risk management, the fund there. Don't. There's nothing. Any. Yeah. Just. I'll repeat. Um, the next one is fleet services, and uh, again, fleet services. We we kept the the funding level at fee fleet services at 75% of that kind of total depreciated amount. And this was the, the equipment list that we're looking to replace. Um, the, the fuel card system, the light duty, uh, three electric bucket trucks, uh, three police cars, or seven total, uh, the water truck, wastewater, um, new, a uh, couple new trash trucks, a uh, couple of normal trucks for stormwater, public works mower, building truck, and um, the new one in there really is that marina forklift, which is about to, to die. That and, and we've we've struggled with that, um, and, and I and I think that investment of, of all these issues on there, that's the one that we probably need the most. So, if we're going to invest in a forklift. The I think I don't think you have a loss in investing in, in the forklift on the marina because a we've got the issues with with maintenance now B as as I've said here in the past month or so I don't think the marina is something that we want to sell or lease 
Um, the market has shown that the, right now the, mali- the, the marine is clearing, a, I mean, it's not a huge number, but the marina clears about $175,000 a year for the general fund. And we really haven't received any type of contribution back towards that. And with, with their plans of expanding the marina, and, and I think, you know, it's something that if we stay in that business, it's something we need to consider doing. Um, fill in that gap to lease it out, to have a private person come in and do the same service. Um, you know, I think we, we, maybe we've got some areas of improvement. There's a couple of little things that we need to do to make the marina better. But as we've looked at the numbers, I think the marina is something that we really need to hold on to and, and become better at that service, not not farm it out and lose that number. I think that number for the general fund's big. So having said that, we do need a new forklift. And so either A, we need a forklift, then it's, that's one of our steps towards getting better at marina service, or B, if we ultimately do lease it out, then that, then that expenditure needs to be included in what a new rental price or sale price would be. Did we ever and adjust the rental prices over there? We did. Um, we don't have one program for this year. Um, we can get you where we're at market-wise, but because of our increases, we're still a tick under market area. I think our numbers of, on average are about 748 um, a linear foot or a foot mm-hmm. per boat for wet storage, and I don't know what we are for dry storage. But we're, you know, we're, we're now, when we compare to other marinas, a couple of pennies and not a couple of dollars okay. underneath. So we're, we're where we need to be. And that's really reflective in that return going up from three, four years ago around 60 grand at the general fund to the 175. Are we full? Yep. We are full. full We've been full. For full, I'd say we raise rates again. So, so are you going to work on? Are you working on a plan to bring us for expansion? Yeah, I can do that. I would like to see, see us do that. I mean, okay. with everything that's going on, Venetian Gardens, and see just what it would. Take. I think that's kind of like Venetian Phase Four. Right. Yep. And but if you bring a plan for expansion, I'm going to want to see a marina operator, like management, in there. I don't like hiring people, and I know you try to keep that low, but if you expand the marina, I just don't see how we continue to run that out of the recreation department. I mean, they could be over it, but. Okay. Or we hire somebody that's gonna put them a little, I hate that, I don't know how you really say this, type of becomes a higher wage position like a supervisor type position and somebody that's actually making a department type thing maybe take it out of parks and that could yeah. be yeah that's why I just mean someone that like has authority to look and maybe some background running in running working in a marina or, and knowing the service aspect and I thought you were I'm sorry I misunderstood I was thinking you were talking about leasing it out to a managing company. No, no. no. Okay, I agree with you. Same the job description. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, actually knows yeah, you're essentially you're going to shift your personnel dollars and a couple of operational dollars in towards a contract dollar, and hopefully your net still yeah. going to be about the same. I just don't think we can continue the same staff and add docs and do all this other stuff. No, I agree. You know, that's, that's it. Yeah. So... With that, you, we've, we've done a pretty much a thorough review of the proposed fiscal year 19 budget. Um, at this stage, we can. I don't know if there's a need for a Thursday's meeting. We've hit everything. If you want to review that, I think probably three, you've got uh, three regular meetings before the before you need to start talking about stuff. So we can come back like we've done in past years and kind of give you updates of regular meetings and and take a break on Thursday, or we can do some summaries on Thursday. And my recommendation would be: I got Commissioner Hurley saying. Let's go. So my recommendation would be, as we update this, we'll get some updates throughout my comments at regular meetings, and then we have our public hearings where we can review everything again for the public uh, one more time. So the nine points of that you talked about, Al, are you going to, in those subsequent meetings, are you going to have those right come up? Right. Well, it's 10 points now. Oh, 10. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we'll, yes, well, I'll give you some updates on that as we move along. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and before you crack the gavel, Mayor, uh, just I want to uh, mention 
Jim and Brandy and, and our department head team have just, again, done a really fantastic job on putting this together. All the department heads, before the budgets get to me, are, are really in very good shape. And, and hopefully we're making the budget process easier for you because we're making some tough decisions before it gets to you. I know we've got a couple of, of uh, things that you guys always take an extra peek at, but I, I think um, as in general, the staff has done a, a fantastic job to present the budget to you in this form and hopefully we make this hard.